Okay, I'd like to bring the meeting of March 9th to order this morning. Jack's ready to go. All right, Jack. Let's stand. We're late. <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, once again, welcome to everybody that uh, is here with us, not only in person, but um, on the web. The York County Board uh, meeting, March 9th. Roll call, please. Brooks. Present. Holdren. Present. Foster. Present. Sykes. Present. Present. Open Meetings Law is posted on the south side of our chambers, in the hallway outside our chambers, and is also on the, the website. Proof of publication was in the New York News Times and on the website March 4th. We need to review and approve the minutes of the February 23rd meeting. Should have been sent to you. Guys. So moved. Second. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, roll call, please. Sykes? Yes. Brooks? Yes. yes. Holdren? Yes. Oswald? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Adopt today's agenda that's in front of us. So move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kurt. Second. Moved and seconded. There's no other discussion. Roll call, please. Holgren. Yes. Osberger. Yes. Sykes. Yes. Throats. Yes. And Yes. Officials. We have two of them with us today. Lori, are you just here for the other? Okay. Is it to you, Harvey? Good morning, Good everybody. morning, Harvey. Good morning, Harvey. Last meeting I told you that they may start on the bridge on road E the middle of March. That was good information at that time. The next day I got a phone call and said we will be there tomorrow. So on Thursday after the last meeting they moved in on road E and started taking a bridge out. Okay. That bridge is now the deck is gone, the abutments I think are gone. The south one they had to work on the end of last week and this week so it should be pretty much out. The test pile on the north abutment has been drove so they know what size of pile they need on that. So that one is rolling forward now. So we're going to beat the May 1st start date by a long ways. Now we see what Mother Nature does for finishing it up. Um, so that's where that one is. The one on Road U, they were waiting for the girders. The girders have showed up in Columbus. So now it is just getting them prepped and ready to go. Uh, hopefully by the end of the week or the first of next week, they will have the girders ready to come down to Road U and we start put in so they can continue with that bridge. The box culvert on Road 10, they poured it. They have backfilled that. They are now taking the bridge out on Road 10 between T and U. So they will be going forward on that. So things are rolling forward on that part of it, on the bond part. So, and then next meeting you will get the bids for the asphalt stuff that we have put out there that they are working. That was in the paper Saturday of the end of the paper. I can't remember what they had told them either Wednesday or Thursday of this week and Wednesday or Thursday of next week that they'll have that advertisement in the paper and then the 23rd goes will be up to be let and see where we go with that. Other than that, everything just hunky dory, beautiful weather now. We got out of the chill, and that's always a good thing. So, oh, yeah, go ahead, Kurt. Um, Harv, we had, when Bill and I were there at the shop this morning, you had talked about the asphalt bids and the, um, yes. the detail that goes into those for, the, for publishing those. Um, is that, where does that requirement come from that you have to? bid it out like that? Is that a state requirement? Is that a the bid or putting it in the Or paper? just the way, all the information you have to put in the paper? Because I think the general public, they don't, you know, they, they want to see, you know, this road. They don't care about the legal description as much as what road are you actually working on and give you kind of a abbreviated what are you doing to it and not all the minute details. Rather than being a statute, I think it is a way the engineering firms like to put it out there for the information for the contractors to know. Okay. Rather than the minimum, shall I say, that they're going to do road B, they're going to do road 3, so on and so forth. 
I think it is the engineers that say this is how we'd like to have it bid out there, rather than which is a little more detailed than what I think it needs to be, but that's my thought. Because so. obviously they, they need those details because they yes, got to give but, us the right but when bid. They, but when they go in and you're going to bid this contract, you still have to get the plans from the engineer, right? right and yeah. you have to pay for that plan. I think that this one it was sixty dollars, and then they know exactly what all they're going to have to do if they're looking at their plans. Whatever. It's just you know, I think it's the preference and the way the engineers like to put it out there. So, um, on ten, Harvey, box and bridge. Yes. Is the is the box each east of the bridge? Yes. Is that where it's at? Yes. Yeah, I wanted to slip down there. I, I assume we're barricaded off, but yes, I can slip down there and take a look at it. But it's up east of it. There was a small there. Well, there was a small box in there, but the way the bridge and the way the guardrails had to go in, <coughs> there wasn't room to put all that in on the existing old box. That's why they had to tear it out and make it longer okay. to get the room to build in for your approach rails on your bridges and stuff that way. So. With the with the early construction of the bridge on E, was we prepared for some kind of haul detour route? Are we working on that? We had graveled last fall. We graveled and rocked Road D to go up. Okay. Um, road D had not carried as much traffic as E was. E was had more rock on it. It was a solider road. Okay. So they're testing it on Road D quite severely. And with the coming of 34, have you been in contact with him? I mean, we did that with, with Rex. He's going to send them, send them back, and that's going right. to be done by April 1. Right. Um, we know that, that they'll probably use our either side of the 34. They'll probably use both sides. Right. And then, yes, the official detour is to go down and run the interstate around. You and I both know right. how people do. They're going to find the shortest route, and yes, they're going to they're going to put stress on Road 13, especially Probably. Road 15 to a point. Okay. So and what are we going to do? We'll just have to deal with it as we go for preempt to do it. Okay. Yeah, because we know. I mean, I would assume 13 is probably going to be a little worse with 15 being blocked off there right before we get to town. So. Yep. Okay. So. Fun times coming up, and that's supposed to start April. Middle of April, I believe, is when they're planning on yeah, starting. Yeah, supposed to be done by April 1st, but it stops back, so. Well, I think they was planning on starting milling the middle of April, is what I heard. I'm sure, so, depending on weather. Yep. Anybody else have anything on par this morning? We could put inch and a half rock on those roads, don't want them to go on. They might stay off. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. They can pack it in for us. <laughs> well, the, the roads appear like the frost. I mean, I don't think there was a ton frost, but they appear to have rebounded rather quickly. I mean, it's out on a few of them. Yes, there's, you're seeing, the frost wasn't as bad as it right. has been in the past years. Mm -hmm. You are still seeing a little issue on them where the grain haulers are running them, right. and it is showing up the softness on them to a point, but not near as bad as it has been the last couple of years. Right. And it's just kind of what we do. We try to get all of the roads packed down nice and hard so they lay and stay that way and Mother Nature tears it apart in the winter with frost. Right. So it's just ongoing is what it is. It's what you deal with with roads. I, say, I didn't think it was as bad though. The ones mm -hmm. that were on. The guys are soft, but the ditches were so full of snow. Right. They're bound to be soft. But, uh, <coughs> if people would just drive off of it, you know, everybody drives in the center. If they would just deviate each time they go over, it would help pack the whole road. But that's it's just the way we all do it, I guess. <laughs> okay, Carl. I don't have anything else. Thank you. Thank you. No other officials? Thank you. So we got the public forum, and uh, as you see, there is an addition to the public forum. And I did have a visit yesterday. And so I think that, that uh, you know, we can affectionately call this the Willard Rule. Uh, three Thank minutes, you very much. You bet. Three minutes uh, to, for, to talk about something that is not on the agenda. Um, just a reminder, too, that the public forum is for just, just a bring up a topic. It's not a question and answer period. Um, so go ahead. I assume you have something to say. <laughs>
Well, I made it up just because of what you put on there. You sure? <laughs> no, not really. Willard Peterson, five, uh, Bradshaw, 514 Road 13, Bradshaw, Nebraska. But I live in I live in the Bradshaw. I live just south of Bradshaw. Does that take part of my three minutes? Uh, for number one, <laughs> for number one, uh, last week or uh, the last meeting. I'm sorry, the last meeting. There were uh, everybody that was on that meeting on there. I was aware of, and only one of those people that I found out later were able to hear at all. And the one person that could is I was told that they shut their computer down and started it up again, and then for some reason it worked. Uh, one of the other people that I know had shut their computer down, turned it back on, they had changed tablets, they had done everything, but the other three people that were on, that I'm aware of, could not hear at all. So, and we've talked about that before, and they said even me, and I said, are you kidding? This mic usually works. So anyway, that was, uh, you know, that's all. Now, the other thing I have is for Mr. Osberger and Mr. Groats, and it has to do with what Harvey reported about Highway 34 going to be worked on and the pressure it will put on those roads. So I would ask you two commissioners, especially mine, Mr. Osberger, to watch that road, and I know Harvey, is Harvey still here? I know Harvey will. Uh, but I happen to live on Road 13, lucky you guys. Uh, and so anyway, it gets a lot of traffic anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, going to get, it's going to get worse. So mm -hmm. anyway, because I did took the time to stop and talk to Warner Construction. And uh, I will take credit for some, of, some people finding out about it that didn't know anything. So I'm taking credit for that. Thank you very much, guys. You will hear from me again. Thank you, Willard. Okay, today, as far as I know, there's no reason, unless somebody knows I want to go into executive session for general assistance cases, so we're heading to the vendor and uh, payroll claims for today. We all have an opportunity to look through them. We're paying them some more money. There was some conversations. I checked into that one. Apparently, there was some conversations that was back in January. Um, we are done. I mean, because I, I have not responded to any phone calls anymore uh, with them, even with the water leak we had. Uh, you know, I didn't do any corresponding because we're, we're done. So there was some conversations that they, they proved that, that we had with them, um, and it was with the amount of bonding. <coughs> and stuff like that. So, okay. There was 800 and something. I can't remember mm. what it was. Yeah. in there. 800 and something dollars. Yeah. But that will be a correct. That's what we're done. Yeah. I haven't talked to them since you have. No, uh, and the fact Jerry you know, showed up at the shop that day, I told you about that. No, I haven't talked to him. I just, want, I just wanted to go away. And we had, you know, in this, this claim, we had some, um, some costs of that. So, that water leak. And, you know, there was a pipe or plumbing bill that was about 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. I've got a bill here for the cleaning that's about three grand. Um, I've contacted somebody about that, and, and we'll probably do it. Me and Kelly will sit down and probably do an insurance you know, deal. I just gonna ask out. Well, I was hoping that, that we were out of we were out of say warranty by like 30 some days. I was hoping that the contractor would. And he has yet to come to me, so I'll try a second time to to, to contact him. And we'll go this route too. Mm -hmm. And there was some other. I, I I did notice that the the gas charges had not. And they were still pretty average gas bill yet. Um, we know that there's a penalty coming from that. Mm -hmm. Right. The yep. five six day period. This yep. gas bill is only two thousand, which is about average for us. So there's there's penalty <coughs> yet. I haven't seen. It. <coughs> Other than that, we had, Harv had some claims, I, I assume, 
Buell and Kerford, you know, is the rock that we're getting in on a continual basis, and that's as that that price is maintained, hasn't it, Harvey? It really hasn't changed much. And the, the three quarter crusher run went up a little higher than what the inch and a half was last year. Part of it was, well, most of it was what they are charging in the mine for it. So, yeah, but that's the only thing that went up was that cost of the run. And I would assume with the nicer weather, we'll start seeing the sand pits get reorganized and. Right now, we are hauling gravel in and stockpiling in the yard right now, well, into the yards. We're getting gravel hauled in with our own trucks at this point in time. And all the rock is now just going to be what we will in the ramp hill plains in. I have one question. Yes, sir. And maybe Harvey can answer this. The federal drug law enforcement sheriff to York County Highway Department. Is that just for fuel? Yeah. I think is that what it is? Yeah. They took it out of that. Okay. They're they're able to do some claims on that. All right. That's all I'm I noticed that too. That's that's fine. This is the second <laughs> time that that's happened. I wanted to clarify it. Okay. There was an engineering bill, is that for the uh, road the asphalt roads that we were talking about? Who is that? Who is it? Um Spies? Lewis? Lewis, no, that was for bridges. Okay. Did you have an additional claim, Mr. Chairman, you're holding up on this here? No. Okay. We'll, add, we'll run that through the next time. Gotcha. I just, right. that was in my box. I would make a motion then to approve the payroll and vendor claims as presented okay. this morning. Thank you, Kirby. Second that. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Roll call, please. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, no funding transfers. We, we did have the balance sheet. Um, uh, you could click if you wanted to. I, I, she had not contacted me. Uh, that's probably because of you know, Harvey's is about 1700 to the wrong side but you should have you should have your highway money coming in and of course the second you know will be the payment so you should be okay in that respect. <coughs> she didn't say anything to me so she must have felt comfortable that that was coming in you all had an opportunity to look through through that one the general said pretty good our, our funds have come in Amanda, was we streaming okay or something? Uh, we were muted here. So. Okay. I guess while, while she's running down there, I will take the time to, to uh, comment on, you know, not only the article in the paper, but the happenings with um, our Sheriff's Department and uh, Seward Sheriff's Department that evening or that morning, whatever you want to call it, and our officer, Officer Taylor Samak, Samek, Samek, S-A-M-E-K, um, above and beyond, mm -hmm. like most of them do all the time. Three o'clock in the morning, scrapping with somebody on the interstate and doing that. And I guess I really feel, guys, like we have all of our officers, and most all of our officers are you know making twenty some bucks an hour. That's a bargain for what they do for us. Mm -hmm. It really is, but uh, and then then that's part of that cooperation that we have between Seward County and us too, that, that obviously paid off for a Seward County deputy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just that he recognized the situation, you know, and took action so he did. That's fantastic. Yeah, he's actually our our officer that has our um, I call it the evening dog handler, but he runs the other dog for us. Corey has since the, the daytime one, and, and Taylor does the evening one. So when they're out there in the middle of the night on that interstate. What flows up the down is crazy. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to say something publicly to thank him and, and uh, for what he does. You know. No, we're good to go. Okay. Um, so we do have something to do that that uh, was brought up at the last minute at the last meeting, and this is actually to ratify the, the signature of the uh, 
the signing of the Nebraska Emergency Management Agency uh, for the highway superintendent as authorized representative for York County. Um, I did sign that, so we need to ratify that. Please. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to reaffirm the signing of the appointment of Harvey Kine, Highway Superintendent, as an authorized representative of York County, federally declared disaster. Any other questions on that one? We kind of talked about it last time. Okay. Roll call, please. Come. Sykes. Yes. <clears throat> Bosberger. Yes. Um, Groats. Yes. Bogren. Yes. 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 Okay, on to, I assume, Lori, this is why you're here. Thanks, Harv. You bet. Have a good day. You bet. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Myers, public Transit and Aging Services. Um, let's see, which item is on there first? The resolution. Resolution, okay. So every, it used to be every year, but now it's every two years that we do a funding request for our public transit system for, to get reimbursement from NDOT. They funnel the state and federal funds through NDOT to us. And it's been nice this last year because COVID funding has picked up everything. So. Um, but now it's time for us to reapply for the next two years. And at this time, this is where I did the memo to all of you. At this time is the time that we would make any changes to our system if we wanted to. And I am proposing that we do so at this time, which would require a hearing. Um, otherwise, it would just be a public notice, and in two weeks, we would sign off on it. Um, I don't want to change the fares for our regular routes and everything that we're doing currently. Um, we do have a lot of requests out there for transportation that we can't um, do due to the way our current um, system is worded. That we only go to Lincoln on Thursdays. Well, not every doctor is only available on Thursdays. Um, we don't go to Omaha at all. Many of the providers, even in western Kansas, or western Kansas, western Nebraska, um, will go to Omaha, and we do not go to Omaha. And we have had multiple requests to go to Omaha. Um, I would like the ability to go to Omaha or to go to Lincoln or other places as it is a, as it's a, there a, a vehicle available, uh, a rider available, a driver available, things like that, so that we can meet some of the needs that there are out there. Um, when I looked at other public transit, and I know you know we're not other public transit, but I've looked at other public transit systems and most of them do go um, more places than we do um, just because of the doctoring. I mean, some people have to go to Hastings even um, for doctoring. Um, so anyways, I would like the ability to do that and um, my thought would be, you know, a $20 round trip. Right now it's $12 round trip to go to Lincoln, which is a bargain that we still keep that $12 round trip on the Thursday because we're trying to get a lot of people to kind of go on Thursdays. It's a, when multiple people go, it's a cost savings to us so we can have that lower um, ride on Thursday still, but to you know ask for $20 when we go to places that are outside of our normal route or outside of our normal day um, to go to that place. So. Um, we would just need to do a hearing that would allow people to provide input on that at the hearing. Um, the other thing is, is that um, non-emergency medical transportation, um, Medicaid reimburses non-emergency medical transportation through their vendors. There's three vendors out there, and right now we're not signed up with any of the three because they're for um, um, for all of their writers because they're all their contracts are 
very boilerplate, don't really apply, a lot of things don't apply to us, and they haven't really worked well with us. They are kind of coming around. Um, they are making more changes to the contract, so I, I see a point where we would actually sign a contract with them at some point in time in the future. Um, right now we have um, agreements with them for like one passenger where we can bill it to them and not have to sign their contract. Well, they'd like us to do more of their passengers. Um, and right now they want to pay us more. And I've been told by multiple ones, you know, that's all you would charge. Well, that's what's in our fares right now. Um, but in talking with a lot of the other transit providers, they've added some wording to their fare structure that allows for additional payment as needed that allows that wording allows them to accept a higher rate from these NEMT providers, which, um, like there's a gal out in western Kansas that runs one of those systems out there, they're basically paying for almost all of their stuff with the NEMT uh, routes that they do because they charge by the mile. So some wording changes would allow us to charge by the mile for these routes that are outside. We'd have to stick with the regular fare structure that we do here in lo the local. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're going at these routes that are outside of our normal routine, we could charge by the mile and make quite a bit of money. That would help offset the costs. Because we have a local, usually outside of COVID, we have a 10% local cost. Um, our fares that we take in go towards um, reduce our um, um, costs, but then those Title 20, the NEMT fares, would go towards, they're considered a local, um, our local uh, portion of what we have to meet, the 10%. So that would go into that, that would funnel into that category and help meet our 10%. So anyways, that's a lot, I know, um, and all, again, it would be as we can. Um, we are getting a new vehicle some at some point in time that's been approved before. It's gotten both signatures <coughs> in January, it got the second signature at NDOT, now we're just waiting. Usually they come around May, um, and so that's when I think we'll probably be getting our new vehicle, so that would help our ability to have more vehicles available. So anyways, what we need today, that, that's the discussion as far as what I would like to do, but as far as what we need to do today is to sign a resolution saying that we are going to apply for funding. Then what would happen is I would, um, we would then set a hearing, and then in the hearing notices it would include these changes if you were to agree with my proposal, uh, changes to the wording and to the um, where we go, where we're available to go, and then that would go into the new that would go to the newspaper twice, and then we would have a hearing where people can come and fight it. But, so for today only, we just need to do the resolution, and then you'd also need to tell me whether or not you want me to put this proposal through into a public hearing, or whether we just go with a regular notice with our normal. Well, let's take care of the resolution first. Okay. So, um, you guys, you've got a handle on, on that as far as the federal funding. Um, uh, need to adopt a motion to, to adopt a resolution to submit for application right. for federal funding. So I'll move to adopt the resolution. Okay, thank you, Chair. Second. Is there any other questions regarding that motion? Roll call, please. Sykes. Yes. Foster. Yes. Uh, yes. Gross. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, so then, the, on the next part, I would I would like to see you know the changes obviously in writing, and like to, to get them to the county attorney to approve any type of wordage changes or anything. We'll make sure we have all that taken care of first, and then 
you know, we'll, we'll set a public hearing rather than, right. you know, right. set one. So, and, and do we want a copy or do we have a copy of current? Can we have a, or, or maybe, you know, however you put it on the spreadsheet. Right. I, just, get... I just didn't want to start moving that way. I wanted to make sure right. that something you guys would be a, a, agreeable to. Do you, um, with the staff and, and everything that you have, is you feel comfortable that offering, if we move to offer these extra routes? Um, At the beginning, I see us being able to do some, mm -hmm. and then more as we go along. But right now, it's it, the wording would be, it, it, we are first come, first serve. Okay. Yep. So it would have to fall within that first come, first serve. So there's sometimes that I have drivers that are available, you know, willing. We've got five vehicles and five drivers, two full-time and three part-time. And sometimes we only have two vehicles going. Some days we have all five vehicles going. So it's just as it allows. Sure. And I, I'm part of the Health Coalition email. And I mean, there has been times in the past, and I forwarded one to, to Lori not too long ago about somebody they need to get to Omaha. And, and of course, you know, they were looking, asking churches and different things. And, and <coughs> so there are those instances where people need treatment and have no form of transportation or no family or, right. you know, so there, just, there's an opportunity. I, I would say that. It wouldn't just be Lincoln and Omaha, like you mentioned. You could, you could Columbus, Grand Island, yeah. Grand, we all go to Grand Island. I could see Kearney. I could see Hastings. The big thing is, is that a lot of these in well, some of these individuals are in a wheelchair or other right. mobility device, and they have no way of getting the transportation without us unless they rent. There's places they can rent a van from, and that's quite cost prohibitive. Um, are there other agencies like yours in the state that are charging by the mile? Are we like the only yeah. one that aren't? Or oh, no. There's many. Some some of them base all their fares on by the mile. They don't even have like the local. They, they do everything by the mile. Um, most people have a local thing and then out of the local area it's by the mile or it's a set cost. Would, would our local area be like the county and then anything outside of that would be by the mile then. Right. Would well, you start, except, would you, go ahead, the, sorry. except for the Lincoln Thursday trips and Thursday, the, every Thursday we either go to Lincoln or Grand Island for the $12 round trip. What I'm saying is anything else outside of that would be, well, well, anything would outside of that would be the $20 except for any EMTs, the non-emergency medical transportation it would allow us to charge them by the mile, and they're more than willing to pay it because they're, they're hurting for providers. So, so those are the ones that we would look at charging by the mile. It would be very cost that prohibitive would be those, for... That, that class would be the only one you do by the right, mile. So, okay. right. It would be very cost prohibitive for a citizen just needing to go to a doctor's appointment that is not a Medicaid-eligible citizen that, that would be cost prohibitive to charge them by the mile. Those I'm proposing is doing it just a $20 round trip, <clears throat> which is kind of, we've got people west of us that aren't charging more than that. So I can't see charging more than that. Sure. I mean, it's still a deal, mm -hmm. but we've got to look at it that, you know, we're getting 80% reimbursement. Well, we don't want to gouge anybody, but at the same right. time, we got to right. keep our agency running. Exactly. Too. Exactly. So. Okay, I think we're good with that. Work on it. Let's get make sure we get everything done okay. and give John plenty of time, and, and then we can, you know, coordinate with the clerk's office about public hearings. Okay. So How okay. have the um, that software system and the computers? I mean, it, that's been a year now, right? Has November. It been? Okay. We started it in November. Okay. It still has a few quirks that we're working on. COVID kind of made it a, a difficulty because. The, the trainer that comes out from, I think, North Carolina, he came out for the initial one week, got us set up and going. He was supposed to be able to come out again, but now there was COVID restrictions and they can't travel. So we've been trying to do a lot of things over Zoom. Okay. And you can't do everything there. Um, it's working out really well, except there are a few things. We still need face-to-face -face time. And so as soon okay. as those COVID restrictions are lifted, then they're looking at coming out and doing that second training that will go more into the management stuff that I'm responsible for, so. Okay. Yeah. I don't have anything else.
else. I was just curious how that was going. Yeah. It's really nice. We've got the fair cards that they just scan. They're not having to get a new card every time they run out. Right. Good. So. Good. Willard, did, you must have a comment. Well, sure. yeah, I was wondering if the if the phone system thing was not taking cell phone calls. Yes. Oh work? my goodness. Oh yeah. Um, that is fixed now. We had to use one of our cell phones that we use for the drivers. We had to make it an office cell phone because <coughs> when we switched to Spectrum, um, for some reason, we could we were getting all of our, the day that they did the install, the phones, if you made a call from your home phone, it would come in on the Spectrum phone. If you made a call from a cell phone, it would come in on the Clearfly phones, which are a web-based phone system. And so I kept telling Clearfly that you've got to do something, and they were saying, it's not us, it's not us. Mm -hmm. And it's taken a while for Spectrum, and they finally got it fixed. So we are getting all calls through our regular number now. Okay. Okay, on the second item then. Yes. Discussion. Second item is just a quickie. That is, it's a um, service provider agreement with DHHS. This is through Maximus. Um, we have to sign off on this. It's a standardized <coughs> thing. Um, it's an online um, agreement. It, it's, it's one where we go through their system online to fill it out and to sign off on it. Um, and it's one of those items that was on that list that I came in think a year ago saying that these are things that I'm going to be having to sign off on every once in a while and this is the one of those items and it's come due for us to sign off on it and so I just wanted to get permission to complete that before I go forward. And, and at that particular meeting we had gave you the per permission to sign off that was but one that of you, those. But you wanted me to okay. come with you to let you know each time those came up okay. so that's what I'm doing. And, and this is a Nebraska Medicaid service provider agreement so yes. with Nebraska Medicaid. Right. Okay. And it's a canned one. It's one of those that John would say, there's, you know, it's, you take what you get. And it is their agreement. Yeah. Okay. You get yeah. what you get, you yes. don't throw a fit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, just letting you know that's coming to you and I'm signing off on it. So I don't know that we need, if we, if we, be, we just at that time just wanted to know when you was doing it. Correct. We didn't need to take any action Correct. because we gave you the permission at that time. So this doesn't really take any action on our, 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 our part. Okay, do you have anything else, Laurie? You pointed, Bill. He's or pointing Bill pointed at me, so it's like, what uh, what A lot of pointing going on. <laughs> Before you leave, did you get your cabinets installed? They're in the process. Dale Radcliffe volunteered to help, and somebody up there told him that we didn't approve him helping, but we did the last time we were sitting here. Um, what I what I heard when you were sitting, and I don't know anything about that conversation. What I heard is that Cal and his helper were going to put him out. That's all I knew. But his helper was Dale. His helper could be Dale. Oh, I thought it was the other gentleman that was downstairs. I don't remember his name. See, Mitch. Mitch. Because he's been pretty well staying with the Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I don't, doesn't matter one way or another. It shouldn't me, matter. Sir. Okay. As long as Cal's overseeing, it should be good to go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Anything else, Jack? Yeah? No. Okay. Thanks, Thank Lori. Thanks. Okay, we're at the at the end, I guess. We, we do have a copy of the fee reports. If, if you guys had an opportunity to look through those, then we can go to committee reports. Who wants to start? I don't have anything to add to It's that. been a really nice, quiet two <laughs> weeks. Like after the two weeks previous, Very this good. has been, <laughs> well, personally, it's been a little bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, publicly, it's been a piece of cake. <laughs> uh, I don't have anything to report this time. Okay. Um, let's see here. Handbook committee met on Friday afternoon. Um, I believe the suggestions for some changes were maybe sent out. They're very technical and minor in nature. So we just wanted, since we met last Friday, we wanted to send those out to everyone, give them a few weeks to mull them over. 
then our meeting, our next meeting, we'll go ahead and put those on the agenda for approval. Um, Send, we're uh, still working on the bird building purchase there. Um, kind of going back and forth a lot there with the, with the seller, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, Uh, I don't know if you guys heard, I think I told a few of you guys this morning, the CDC, they've come out with recommendations about, um, now they're saying if you've, if you've been vaccinated and other people have been vaccinated, the vaccinated people can commingle together now without masks and uh, um, social distancing requirements. So hopefully that means we're getting out of this pretty quick here. So I think it's, I think it's high time that we get out of that. Without mask and, and or with low risk, mm -hmm. I think. Right. So, I mean, they, they may even change their mind again, who knows. Mm -hmm. so it's, yeah. But it's nice to know the federal government's to do certain things. <laughs> so, we can be in the same room with these old times. Yeah, I guess we can. You know, so. okay. You're totally vaccinated, right? I'm all done. <laughs> oh, and then um, I also spoke with John Cannon from NACO. And um, as you guys are maybe aware, there was the federal stimulus package that was advanced this weekend or voted on in Congress. I think the House has to approve it yet and the President signs it. There was uh, aid to counties included in that. And John said according to the National Association's website, they have estimates for counties what they'd be receiving in that funding. Mm -hmm. York County is estimated to receive $2.6 million in funds. Um, and that's an estimate, and then there are strings attached. It has to be related. You can only spend it on COVID-related expenses. <clears throat> Got to document it. I think the first half goes out at a certain time, and the second half goes out later. Um, Douglas County, they're estimated to receive 111 million. I'm sure. I don't know. I don't know for what. what. Well, even your county. I mean, I don't know right. where we would have a million dollars in expenses. Really, I mean, it's just. We've already received, like you know, we reported last time, a little over half on wages that we'd already covered. Mm -hmm. Our taxpayers had already covered, mm -hmm. um, and, and they, they hadn't covered the windows yet, which was you know seven or eight thousand um, dollars. But that was going back through FEMA, so I'm, I'm not sure where we would come up with it. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, and then. So I guess there's, it, it's, it's nice that the federal government's wanting to mm -hmm. help Give us our out, money but, away. At the, but at the same time, it's a, we don't, it's, it just show, it shows the, it, it shows the excessiveness of the spending of that bill. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And it's all free money, you know, so. There's no such thing as free money. Just so you guys are aware, and I think they go, they're going to be um, putting together some documents for counties, some guide, guidance for counties to use when they're trying to utilize those funds, so. Is there any hot button going on in the legislature right um, now? I think they're counting votes on the inheritance tax bill to see if that's gonna get out of committee or not. Um, the all day committees, those have, those have come to end, actually all committee hearings have come to an end except for judiciary, they're meeting this week yet, um, just because they always get a bunch of bills referenced to them. Mm -hmm. So they're getting morning debate now at least. Um, this week, so they'll, our uh, priority bill designation is this week, so they're um, getting to move on there. So How about the two two that we supported via letter, the um, the clerk and the um, highway bonding? Hey, Bonnie's looking at yeah. Let me look at you had nothing. I just have a couple of things. I've been out watching Rody. It's amazing how fast. There the other day, and they were just finishing up cleaning out what there was. Mm -hmm. so they're kind of getting ready to get going again. Uh, yesterday, I had a Region 5 meeting, and uh, out of the 16 counties, there were seven of us that were present, four on Zoom, five were absent. And CJ did suggest that uh, why he took a poll of everybody to see what's if they needed to come out for their fund, fund request again. And there are some counties that said don't come. 
So we just took a straw vote and decided just to mail out. Everything's going to be about the same as it has been in the past, so they will not come in person. So uh, that's about all I have there. I, and I did want to just check. You answered the question, Kurt, on the uh, inheritance committee. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. And then the other two you're asking about, um, they're still in committee. They're still in committee. Did you have anything? Well, I just, I gave this to Kurt the other day, but the redistricting, I got some different companies that mm -hmm. will do redistricting. I don't know if you guys want to do that. Um, yeah, and see, that information's not getting, probably not going to get back to the states from the feds until October ish. So and we can't do anything mm -hmm. until the legislature does their redistricting. Mm -hmm. Which will be his third mm -hmm. right. to do a special session this fall for that. Mm -hmm. So it might be we might be pushing November because we're going to want to get that done. His filing right. starts December first, yeah. right, yeah. Kelly? So we're going to have to have that done before yeah. before and, then. So yeah. and that's what that G Works gentleman said that first people that sign the contracts are to be the first people in line to get this done. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what wanted to continue. Did you want to look anymore? I'm I, I want to. And she gave me a list of some other people I want to reach out to them. Then I'll try to make a decision on that. Did you have anything else? Um, so you guys know that, that uh, we have not, to my knowledge, had an opportunity today about this, but the audit budget proposals that we sent out, we haven't, we haven't heard anything back yet. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't prior to the next meeting, I'll, I'll have that on the, okay. the, the next meeting. Well, you, if we do, no, whatever. Right. Yep. We'll have it on the next meeting. Um, I did not sign up that the, although the last two weeks have been really clear, I, the next ones are setting up to be really busy. So I did not sign up for the central I did, uh, meeting because I had some conflict and then mm -hmm. we have right. the YCDC that night and I had visitors and, and there was just too much going on. So I did not sign up for that one. So is there any representation? I know you said we had some credit yeah. for um, some that were Bill has credit. Harvey's going, Sherilyn's going, Mitch is going, and I'm going to zoom it. Okay, all right. So we have that. Uh, we did get this letter. I think we should have had a letter in the box uh, from Ann. And is that something that, I mean, it was addressed to you, Bill, and she talked to you about right. this? Right. So, and I had told her just to go in there, and I talked to Kelly also when that bill does come in. I think it estimated about 8,500. I don't know if that, that's not the final number, but just to go ahead and take it out of data processing. Is that something that, that uh, you, you understand completely what's going on here? Or do we need to have her come in and, and you know, I, explain? I've read through it a couple of times. It might be all right just to have her come in and make a meeting just to clarify. I'll visit with her just a little bit about possibly coming in and explain that to us then, if that's okay. It's just, um, it's just it's kind of like a house cleaning situation. Well, it's got to be done. Right. Okay. And that was from the GI Yes, works. Okay. Uh, we did get a letter from um, jail standards. I recall him in, in one of these before, but we passed our minimum jail standards. So that's a good thing. I guess we're kind of full. Right? We had like two or three in silver right now. Unfortunately, we're a little bit full. Anybody else have any? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we need to just lock our stuff up so they can't <laughs> get to it. It's easy. <laughs> take keys out take of your keys out of here. <laughs> yes, absolutely. They say build a jail on top of the common center over there. That was, mm -hmm. was constructed for uh, three additions. It, it was. Actually, the jail itself. That was too. Yes. Yes, because the, there was a gentleman mm -hmm. here in town that was um, Dennis Dooley had talked to me and that he was on the original construction site and that was actually designed to go to second floor. Mm -hmm. I don't think we want to go there, guys. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, so anything else? Okay, we'll stand adjourned. we got about 10 minutes before our board equalization. So.